kids into hospitals. Fathers, mothers, children, the elderly shot down in cold-blooded executions. People queuing for food gunned down and rolled over by tanks. People being deliberately starved to death. Destroyed neighborhoods and lives. We see Israel's unconscionable crimes. We see their genocide. And we see the disgrace, the unforgivable complicity of so many Western governments. And we also see the consistent and unacceptable inaction of our government. Well enough, we demand action from them. And as we see this, Palestinians are living it. More than 32,000 people have been murdered. Over 13,000 children have been murdered. In the West Bank, more than 500 people, including at least 120 children, have been murdered. 12-year-old Rami Hamdan was shot in the heart last week while lighting a firework for Ramadan. Countless thousands of people have been detained in apartheid Israel's dungeons where they are massacred, are tortured, abused and starved. And Israel is committing a flower massacre every day. Every day people who are trying to get food for their families are murdered by these sadistic war criminals with no consequences. Since the flower massacre, over 600 Palestinians have been murdered trying to get or give out aid. Doctors, nurses and patients are being tortured and executed at Shifa Hospital. It is barbarism. And we say this today and we will say it forever. They are not numbers. They are our sisters, our brothers, our people. And we grieve and mourn for their immeasurable loss. We see the skeletal bodies of children like Yazan El Kafarna who starved to death and all the people who have died of hunger and dehydration. All while the aid trucks, thousands of them line up at Rafa, blocked entry by Israel. And we have the shameful US pier built from the rubble of Gaza and the crushed bones of the beautiful Palestinians murdered there. Absolutely criminal. We see the parachutes dropping useless food packages from the sky, killing people as they fall. We see Western powers talking about ways to get food aid into Gaza, when all they have to do is make Israel open the crossings. EU foreign policy head Joseph Borrell said Gaza has become a graveyard for the principles of humanitarian law, that Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war. Correct, Joseph Borrell. So why doesn't the EU sanction Israel instead of funding and enabling these crimes? And starving people to death is part of Israel's genocide. And the people that don't die will bear the health effects for their whole lives. Starvation in children causes stunting for life. Israel is trying to destroy the Palestinian people and every single person that dies of starvation is a murder victim. And as much as there are these endless brutal acts of violence and depravity, we also see the people in Gaza, their daily acts of courage, resilience and love they try to hold their families and communities together while Israel tries to tear them apart. How they comfort each other even as they bleed themselves. We see the dad saying goodbye to his little baby on his phone. We see how they share the little food they have with each other to break their fast. How they try to make the children forget the horror they're being subjected to they tend to patients in bombed hospitals and try to protect each other. The brave, brave Palestinian heroes of Gaza, we salute their unimaginable courage. And we need to talk about impunity, about accountability, about justice. Remember that from months ago, Gaza has been a different color altered beyond recognition. It is difficult to remember and 
atrocities and this is designed to overwhelm and normalize these crimes so we cannot turn away and we will not turn away and this is all possible because of disgraceful western support for genocide those disgusting governments that provide arms that cut off funding to UNRWA that green light, green light this it is possible because of 75 years of impunity it is a stain on the world that most governments including the Irish government have stood by as Israel murdered Palestinians at will demolished their homes stole their land bulldozed their olive groves incarcerated almost a million people in its dungeons imposed checkpoints built walls as it operated a regime of racism secular colonialism and apartheid impunity enables this and there must be justice we also need to talk about our media why do they continue to report Israel's propaganda? Israeli soldiers post videos of themselves all over social media carrying out atrocities and their military are still given airtime and treated as a legitimate source of information when they are proven liars. They lied about Shireen Abu Akleh about the hospitals, they lied about the north of Gaza, they lied about the south of Gaza, they lied about the flower massacre, they lie about everything and the only platform they should ever have is in the dock at the Hague for war crimes. So much of the framing and reporting of what Israel is doing provides cover for genocide and normalizes and minimizes crimes against the Palestinian people. And history will judge media very harshly for the role it has played in this genocide. And our government is still doing absolutely nothing. We have yet to see one concrete measure to sanction Israel for its crimes. We are sick of demanding they enact the Occupied Territories Bill, the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill, and sanction Israel for its crimes. Israel keeps committing these atrocities because they know they can get away with it. And this week we found out that instead of cutting off trade with Israel, Ireland has actually increased trade with Israel. What a disgrace. We will never forget what they stood by and we will never forgive. And then in a beautiful contrast to this, we had amazing solidarity from our artists last week. All the Irish artists to perform at South by Southwest Music Festival in Texas withdrew due to its sponsorship by the US military and weapons manufacturers. All 12 acts. Salute kneecap.
rejection of genocide and of racism and mass murder. They all say to the Palestinian people, we are with you. We are always with you. We will do what we can. And sometimes that's big and sometimes it's small, but it is always something. And we are always with you. in this US-sponsored genocide. Last year he wrote, it's important to imagine a better world. Let your thoughts run wild with idealistic dreams of what the world should look like. And let the pain and anger at how it's not that way flow through you. Let it free your mind and fuel your rage against the machine. It's not too late for you or anyone. We can have the world of our dreams tomorrow, but we have to be willing to fight today. And he was right. Another world is possible. And that is the world we fight for. Where bombs don't rain down on Palestinians. Where children are not afraid. Where everyone can be and live and fulfill their beautiful potential. Where the refugees return where the prison walls fall, where everyone is free and where Palestine is free. Never forget that we are part of a community of hope, of love, of solidarity, of liberation, and we are not going away. All our love and solidarity from the streets of Dublin to to the refugee camps, to the exiles. End Israeli apartheid, end the occupation, end the siege of